part of the crowd or standing on the edge, full of life or barely functioning, up for anything or growing weary. All are welcome in this place and in this moment. Here, know that God sees us all and God's heart is open to us all. Here, find peace, find a new beginning, find joy, find Christ, sharing our highs and our lows, our worries and our fears, our disappointments and our dreams, as well as our possibilities. Come now to praise the three in one God who is with us always. With you by our side, Lord Jesus, we sit. Quieten, we pray, our hearts and minds so that we can be open to your voice and to your touch. Still our spirits so that here with you we may find the courage to be honest and to confess to those times both knowingly and unknowingly when we've let you down. When we fail to look to you, when we choose to go our own way, when we can't help but worry, and when we forget that you are there to help us and to hold us, then please forgive us and gently remind us of how much you care and of how willing you are to turn us around as people forgiven to start again. Help us, Lord Jesus, to look to you as our example and as our friend. Help us to trust you more. And in you, may we find hope for our own lives and for the life of the world. All this we ask in your name, Lord, who taught your friends to pray, saying, Say this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
When Jesus heard the news about John, he left there in a boat and went to a lonely place by himself. The people heard about it, and so they left their towns and followed him by land. Jesus got out of the boat, and when he saw the large crowd, his heart was filled with pity for them, and he healed their sick. That evening his disciples came to him and said, It's already very late, and this is a lonely place. Send the people away and let them go to the villages to buy food for themselves. They don't have to leave, answered Jesus. You yourselves, give them some to eat. <laughs> All we have here are five loaves and two fish, they replied. Then bring them here to me, Jesus said. He ordered the people to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven and gave thanks to God. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. Everyone ate and had enough. Then the disciples took up twelve baskets full of what was left over. The number of men who ate was about five thousand, not counting the women and children. This moment when Jesus feeds a great crowd of women and men and children is a moment which is recorded in all four of the Gospels. For Mark, Luke and John, as well as for Matthew, this was a day never to be forgotten. I suppose, though, that's hardly surprising. It's not every day you see a few bread rolls and a couple of fish stretched to feed thousands upon thousands of people. I'm sure it's a day that stuck in the minds of everyone who was there. And no doubt each one of them would have had their own version of what happened based on how they saw the events of that mind-blowing day. Little details and personal touches that would have added depth to the story and made the telling of it even richer still. For many of us though, it's perhaps a story that's so familiar that we rush through it and we let the drama of it, the shock of it, the beauty of it, pass us by. Today, let's not let that happen. Instead, let's take the time to notice things we perhaps haven't noticed before so that we see the story from a different angle. The bigger picture is important. This day was a very long one in which the miraculous meal was only one of the many things that had happened. The crowd had been with Jesus for hours. He'd then taken off in a boat to be alone. The news of the death of his cousin John had floored him. He needed time to mourn. The crowds he'd left, however, decided to follow him and set off on foot to walk around the lake to meet Jesus on the other side. When Jesus got to shore and saw all the people waiting for him, did his heart sink? Did he think, I just need some space, some peace. No, we're told that when Jesus saw the crowd, he was moved, moved with pity and compassion for them. Earlier in the day, Jesus had been talking to people about the kingdom of heaven. He'd wanted folk to grasp how beautiful and different, how amazing and wonderful that kingdom is. A kingdom he compared to the seed a farmer sows, and to mustard seeds, and to yeast, as well as to unexpected and long-sought treasures. On top of that, lots of people in the crowd had asked Jesus to help and to heal them. And Jesus had spent ages helping those who were sick or disabled or who were troubled mentally. He must have been utterly exhausted and emotionally and physically drained. But then the crowd too must have been exhausted, all that walking in the sun and the heat. As the day wore on and folk began to think about the journey home, suddenly they realised how tired they were, how sore their feet were, and how hungry they were. Jesus' friends recognised the signs, and no doubt aware of how drained Jesus was too, they tried to encourage Jesus to do the sensible thing and send the crowd away. And Jesus was aghast. 
Why would his friends want to send people away when there was food right here to feed them all? The people don't need to go anywhere, Jesus told his friends. Not when you can feed them. And the disciples' jaws dropped. Their faces said it all. Are you serious, Jesus? But what they said was, but all we have are five loaves and two tiny fish. Bring them to me, Jesus had said. And the miracle happened. Jesus took the bread and fish and blessed them, and it became enough for all to eat. There were even leftovers. There was more than enough.
there was more than enough. Here in the wilderness, Jesus acts out one of the stories that he told the crowd earlier, just hours before. Even the tiniest seed of faith can do amazing things, he told people. And now, from just a few bread rolls and two fish, Jesus feeds thousands. But when Jesus sat everyone down on the grass that day and fed them, many of the crowd, as well as the disciples, may well have found their thoughts going back even further in time to when Moses had led God's people through another wilderness and God had provided food for them. But this massive picnic also manages to point forward to what has not yet happened and to what no one could yet know. And I suspect that's why all four gospel writers remember this moment as a significant one. The miracle in and of itself is amazing, but added to that is the way in which that miracle came about and why it happened. So let's go back again to the story. Did you notice that Jesus got everyone to sit down? Everyone was invited to take a seat, to get comfortable, like honoured guests. Then Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. He then handed the bread to his disciples who handed it on to the crowd. The next time that Jesus would do that was on the night of his betrayal, when after supper he would take some bread and bless it before breaking it and handing it to his friends, telling them that that bread was his body and it, was be, it would be broken for them. This feeding of thousands points forward to the way that God will provide just as he always has done in the past. Like the mustard seed that grows to be a shelter for all sorts and is food for all too, this moment of eating is about bringing people together to be nourished, to be made whole as individuals and as a community of God's people. But perhaps the most significant part of this story is the motivation behind the miracle. Jesus had gone off in the boat to be alone for a bit. Only once he'd crossed the lake and reached the other side, he saw the crowd and changed his mind. Why was that? Well, the sight of the crowd, we're told, moved him. The moment Jesus saw all the people, Jesus was filled with compassion for them. And that compassion made him get off the boat to mix with the women and the men and the children who were there. And it was that same compassion that moved Jesus to feed the crowd. He could see they were hungry. He knew the walk home that they all had. Jesus wanted and needed to see the people were fed and nourished. And perhaps as Jesus' friends moved through the crowds with the food he'd asked them to distribute, perhaps then both the disciples and all the people they reached out to realised that the miracle was not only in what Jesus could do. The miracle lay and lies still in how Jesus' presence simply changes people specially invited to share specially blessed food. The crowd didn't worry about having enough. They simply shared what they had and knew, just knew that with Jesus, somehow there would be enough to go round because God is good. This story, however, doesn't simply provide food that satisfies one crowd a long time ago. It also offers a takeaway for us today. A takeaway that says Jesus' friends these days need, like Jesus' disciples back then, we need to commit to seeing God's goodness shared so that people stop hoarding and find the confidence to go on sharing, knowing that then everybody will have enough because God is good and good to everyone.
ever-living God, creator of us all, you tend and care for all your hands have made. You created this world to be a beautiful and fruitful place, not just for a few, but for all who share this planet. Help us, we pray, to follow Jesus' example and to look for ways to ensure that all are fed and all are cared for so that none may starve. Give us, we pray, your heart for this world and for everyone in it. And thank you for those who work so hard to bring us the food we need. Thank you for farmers and producers. Thank you too for those who market and transport and sell. And thank you too for those who prepare and cook the feed, food we eat. Hear us those, we pray for those for whom food is more difficult to come by. We think of those reliant on food banks and of the too many who don't have access even to that. We think of those facing famine in Sudan, Burkina Faso, Mali and Somalia right now, and of the millions worldwide who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Lord God, help us to live more intentionally and responsibly, ready to share with those who have less, and help us too to be ready to care more for the planet we inhabit only by your grace. So may the whole earth thrive as you intended. We bring you our prayers for peace, for peace in a world torn apart by intolerance, violence and fear, and by economics and politics. Transform, we pray, Lord Jesus, the mindsets that thrive on hate and mistrust and replace them with hearts that dare to care. Into your hands we offer those who are sick, especially those for whom there is no cure. Lord Jesus, let your presence bring peace, peace of mind, heart and spirit, and let your hands hold and carry and heal. We give you thanks too this day for those whose love and friendship feed and nurture our hearts and souls. We thank you for those who lift our spirits and for those who brighten our days. But more than anything, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your unending love and care that loves us into life that is eternal. Help us to live out that gratitude in all we say and do and are. These things we ask in your name, Lord, and for your sake. Amen.